ship! Let's Please take it! Yes! Yes! Hello and welcome to the Thresher Football Show. I'm Dan Page alongside head football coach at Bethel College, A.B. Stokes. Bethel College coming off a 24-14 loss to Kansas Wesley and now 3-2 and two on the season as they get sent to play their final non-divisional game this week against Tabor at 2 o'clock from Hillsboro. But the Threshers in the last week's home contest against Kansas Wesleyan fall 24-14. Uh, coach, um, you know, I, I, there's some a little bit of gratitude in the moments that you had in the game. I, I, I would ex, I would expect uh, just because some players were extremely limited in the game this week, this last week. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I mean, but it, it's one of those things where the game itself uh, made us as as a coaching staff take a step back and reflect on um, kind of more of a next man up. Mm -hmm. kind of mentality you know what I mean sometimes you take for granted uh, wh what you have or you just think like things are going to always go according to plan and if they don't you know we, we, we as coaches I feel we have to do a better job of uh, preparing the next guys mm -hmm. and that 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 was something that I, I'd say is a positive coming out of uh, this this game with Kansas Westlane and uh, we, we've coined an, an acronym uh TGFND. Okay. Thank God for non district. <laughs> yeah, uh, non division. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. non division, right. Yeah. Thank God for non division. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely uh, been an interesting ride in the non divisional aspect of things. And of course, you know, your final five games is where it's at. Yes, sir. You know, yeah. when it comes to postseason things like that. I mean, whoever's what now may not be the same way at the end of the season we'll find out but uh yeah well, i guess what i meant with that question is like you know you had a few players that were playing sick and just to get them in for some of the moments you know where they felt well enough to come into the game uh and really contribute like the first drive that your offense had oh okay i see what you yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah when it comes to that but you dj sears throws a 35 yard touchdown pass yeah. to trayvon madison mm -hmm. a lot of i liked the build-up to that touchdown on that possession. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. Coach Denton had a, a great game plan going in, and uh, we knew we, – we didn't know how limited DJ uh, may or may not, uh, you know, was going to be for the game. Mm -hmm. We didn't know exactly, but we knew we'd just keep, keep an eye on him it, with him not feeling his best. Um, and uh, the, the first drive, the game plan worked so well because, you know – we didn't even i don't think we attempted to run dj at no. all you know what i mean so it worked really well uh we we got him to to come up in the box and then bam over the top and that's the kind of that's the kind of team that we'd hope that we could be and we saw that uh, you know mm -hmm. it's something that we can do is stretch the field uh, vertically you know uh, especially w once we get them to come up on our, with our run stuff so yeah, certainly, and uh, of course th that was a big part of the first half. And then Kansas Wesleyan rattles off a few points after that. They kick a field goal, a 42-yard field goal, and then they add a couple touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was what 17 to seven at that point. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Trayvon Madison with a 72-yard punt return for touchdown. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the returns that he's had this year that have been brought back because of penalties. Yeah, I was looking for it. The only yellow I saw on the field was Kate Upstreet uniforms yeah uh, thankfully but uh you know you know it, it, it kind of set my expectations when he has the ball in that situation yeah and you know i'm trying to describe how he's running down the field things like that but uh he's we're so blessed to have him as an athlete not just at you know on the offense but in special teams he's been really good in all-purpose yards absolutely and he was a i believe he was a preseason all-conference uh selection I'm sure he was. He was for for I think for utility. I'm pretty sure, yeah. and it's the reason why you know we we even nominated him uh, uh, from Bethel because we we know how special he 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 was going to be uh, this year. Yeah, he made it 17 to 14 at halftime, and uh, 
really, you, you know, he didn't know what to expect in the second half. And I painted it, I think, before the game and maybe during the broadcast as well. But, you know, <laughs> spoiler alert for the rest of the game, obviously your team lost 24-14. to 14, mm -hmm. But three of the last four years at home – when Kansas Wesleyan comes to town, they have shut out Bethel College's offense in the second half. And that was, I mean, I couldn't, I can't believe how, how they do that necessarily. I mean, they have the physicality. They have some really good players. Um, they manage the game pretty well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, second half was kind of interesting for you because, you know, DJ was so limited. And you, you throw Russell Duggar into things. And, you know, what it, what has he had in live game action in college? One JV game maybe a little bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is such a I, – I mentioned it on the broadcast. I'm like, that's such a tough situation. It but, is. It is. But you, you kind of have to rise to the occasion. And, you know, it, he made the best out of things that, you know, in those situations – in some, you know, he was three of ten passing in the game, mm -hmm. but had some good runs yeah. uh, when needed. Uh, you know, he 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 made he sold the defense on the handoff a little, <laughs> a little long a couple of times, yeah, but hey, yeah. he got some good yardage on it. Yeah. But uh, you know, t a young guy to be thrown into that situation, I thought was, um, you know, c you know, he had some positives to that. And yeah. and I tell you what, man, I think uh, you know he's come th this this practice with not just him, but even some of the other quarterbacks, you know, they are, man, it's it's like a light went on. Like, <laughs> like you know. It's like they got to be ready. Yeah, we got to be ready. And there's going to come a time where, you know, these guys aren't, I don't think, DJ's the oldest quarterback on, on the roster. Mm -hmm. He's a know? junior. Right. And every every other quarterback have three to four years mm -hmm. uh, available. You know right. what I mean? And so it's one of those things where it's like, man, you know, the time the time is coming you know, Coach Greider has this saying, the days are long, but the years are short. You know, yeah. we, we're going to look up, and it's going to be 2025. You know what I mean? It's about to be 2024 in I know. three don't, months. Don't, don't remind me. Yeah. Okay, but I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get the men in black pencil. <laughs> hey, you're older than me, so, I mean, <laughs> whatever you say. <laughs> you don't know that reference? Yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking oh, okay. about. Oh, yes. okay. I was like, come on, Dad. Don't. No, I'm not that old. The man. generalizer. There we go. The de <laughs> Yeah, but no, it's uh seriously, man, I think it, it kinda lit a fire like, hey man, you know, like the time is coming and mm -hmm. you never know uh when when that time's gonna be. And I mean all of them uh, all of them I think uh definitely as far as execution wise had a had a way better practice today than than I've seen in a while, um, from uh just just the quarterbacks as a whole. Yeah, and some of them are still just, you know, getting it used to the offense and how you do yeah. things to some degree and yep. just fully understanding, you know, what they need to be reading mm -hmm. necessarily. They have the physical ability to right. do things and, you know, throw the ball or whatever they need to do. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, make, having that comprehension is, you know, <laughs> part of the critical thinking in a quarterback position like we talked about last week. Yeah. So. And then, you know, it helps having, you know, Coach Cagle being able to be in the room and, and, and mm -hmm. explain to them, you know, his college situation. You think about it, Southwestern is like the king of the quarterbacks, man. They right. they always ready to plug and play. Yeah, you know, at least three. Like the, at <laughs> least three, man. Saying, and so, you know, having him being able to explain that, like, hey, man, you never know. Like, he, he was the guy there. He goes down. Somebody stepped up. And I believe that was one year where they that person even went down. Yep. And, you know, so it's uh, it's just helpful to have guys like that on the staff with that kind of experience uh, to be able to articulate that, especially to a position like quarterback, man, giving them some confidence and, you know, give them a little – because it's hard being a, a, a backup quarterback, right? Right. It's hard. Like, it's not like a backup running back where you get in or a receiver where you get in, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Backup quarterback, we don't rotate quarterbacks, right? Right. So – it's it's just one of those things where it's, it it can be mentally hard through through the season. Like as mm -hmm. the season goes on, and it, you know you could be like, oh, I'm not gonna play. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, boom, you you've got to play, and you know you, you you're not a hundred percent ready, or you're not where you would have been if you would have kept the mindset of I'm gonna play. And I'm not saying that's where uh, Russell Duggar was at all. I thought Russell Duggar was. Uh, 
you know, he was definitely prepared to, to do, you know, the things that we were going to need him to do to try to win the game. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it didn't work out, we, we felt very, very comfortable uh, that, you know, his mistakes were going to be limited. And uh, we feel like we had playmakers where if we could have, you know, just – uh, got, gotten things to fall our way a little bit better and, and, you know, get the ball into their hands and things like that. We, we felt like we had an opportunity to score a touchdown or two. You know what I mean? So right. it, it didn't happen. It doesn't change the fact that, you know, we believed. So. Yeah, I mean, you see it even at the professional level. Blaine Gabbert was thrown in for Patrick Mahomes this last Sunday, and he threw two interceptions oh, yeah. as a backup quarterback. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's you know, dusting off some of that rust yeah. and getting into the flow of things. Yeah. And I think that's – And Blaine Gabbert was a starter in the NFL at one point, right? Yeah, he yeah. was. So I thought, yeah. Yep, so. But that's just one comparison. Uh, just kind of looking at some of the numbers for Bethel. DJ Sears in the limited action, he was he was 9 of 10 passing for 61 yards through a 35-yard our touchdown pass to Trayvon Madison. He was sacked once. The only interception he had was tipped. Yep. Hey, and I tell you what, if we are we go back, go watch that film. If he, oh man, if that's not tipped, that's another big game. If not yeah. touchdown, and it changes the it, it changes the dynamics oh, yeah. of the game because they pick it off and run back to the twenty five, mm -hmm. and then that's a scoring drive for them. You know, right. had, we gave them two short fields with the fumble for, uh, on the 40, yep. uh, 41 yard touchdown drive they had in mm -hmm. the twenty five yard touchdown drive, and that's the thing that you know that's kind of uh, it's a little bit it's it, not not an easier loss. There's no such thing, but it's something that where you can go back and be like, look, fellas, all right. Uh, we had some unfortunate circumstances going on, and we gave them two short fields that they capitalized on. Outside of that, I think they had they had like 200 yards of offense. Yeah. If you take away those short fields. Right. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, but the problem is, so did so did we. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? But you know, I I feel I'm very confident in in our team and our guys, and I'm telling you, man, somebody somebody's gonna put it together. And, and make a run and I'm I'm like why not us yeah I mean everybody has to have that mentality at this point of yeah, the season for sure. I mean you wiped the slate clean on October 7th yes, basically sir. or after this week's game actually after this game yes, sir. so you know everybody gets a fair chance at it the rest of the way um as far as that goes but yeah I, I just thought that I thought it was interesting though that uh, you, you know we talked about last week that you know you were talking about how they were more of a run team. They throw for three touchdowns I know. in the game, and I know. and I knew I knew they were capable. That's why I said it at the yeah. time. You know what though? They threw for like 150 yards. They threw to the running back twice. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's because that, you, you know why they threw it because they had to. They had 86 yards of rushing. Yeah, that's why they threw. The Nick Alsman ran the ball really well. Yeah, when How'd he had touches. With 86 yards of rushing. Uh, I mean, he was, you know, when you guys, when Tyler Boston was in the game for you guys, their running back that rotated in, number 33, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like the defense was able to, you know, I don't know what you want to call it. They just had more success against him running the football than Nick Alsman because yeah. they ran around of stretches and counters, things right. like that with him. So, okay. um, you know, and he's a harder runner. He, yeah. We all know that. But uh, so, yeah, some of the numbers there. Um, and then uh, let's look at defense for the Threshers. Cade Miller played out of his mind yes, again. He did, man. Thirteen yes, he tackles, did. two for loss, and a sack. Yeah. Uh, you guys had an interception in the game from Tristan Berger. Tristan Berger. That was oh, big. You know, Long coming in, baby. coming in for Robin Neely, who was mm -hmm. uh, unable to play, got yeah. banged up against Avila. Yeah. And uh, you know things. And T. -Bert, so normally we we kind of we try to rotate some of our safeties. Tristan Berger played the whole game. Yeah, you know, so and that's you know that's uncommon in our system, especially with you know how physical defense is, and uh, you know I know he was feeling it on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you almost have to uh, in that situation. He had two tackles to go along with that performance. Doug Ryder seven tackles. Grant Godsey six tackles from his safety position, and uh, a number of guys. Uh, you had. Uh, Ernest Ferrier with a sack and Mitch Monteith again. I think he's up to three sacks. That's, I know. Rotating I, I know, in. I know. I was just like, <laughs> man, Mitch, he's he's making uh, Avery Hawkins proud with that 45 on his chest. You know what I mean? Yep, he sure is. Yeah. And so the getting the Threshers fall 24 to 14. Only one touchdown in the second half, and that was with 9:49 to play in the third quarter, and the rest of it was just, you know. 
nothing. <laughs> you could have fallen fall asleep at that point. Your kids <laughs> could have fallen asleep at that point, and they would have been all right. Oh man, well but, we had some exciting punts, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, don't they? Hey, we got a Jackson Walker. We got to show him some love. He, well, yeah, absolutely. I was just like, I told him, I said, hey, Jackson, you had a great game, man. <laughs> So, you know, it kind of reminds me of, like, Baylor back in the day when they would always have the best punter in the country. Yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's been exceptional, to say the least, yes. for yes. your football team. Let's look at a few scores from around the conference, and then we'll wrap up this segment of the show last mm-hmm. week. Um, of course, you guys fall 24-14 to at home against Kansas Wesleyan. Mm-hmm. Friends defeats Tabor 36-13 to in Wichita. Mm-hmm. Of course, the Threshers play Tabor this week. Southwestern wins big at home against Sterling 48-10. to mm-hmm. McPherson defeats Avila by 21, 42-21. to mm-hmm. And then a close game in Missouri as Ottawa comes really close, um, you know, loses by six at Evangel, 27 to 21. Um, Ottawa team, you know, nobody's going to sleep on them. They they could, you know, in the in the Bissell division, they could do some things. They we'll see. They definitely can. They definitely can. They could be, you know, one, two. We'll, we'll see. We'll find out. I mean, yeah, that's the thing, though. I think it's crazy. Both divisions, I think, because it's like on that side, you got. Ottawa, but you still got K- Kansas Wesleyan. Yep. Avila is going to be a dangerous team. I'm telling you. Yeah. And then you got uh, St. Mary, who yep. who plays. Who did they play last week? They played Bethany and won 57 to 18. Like so, so they're they're figuring some. They're things figuring out. things out. They're putting up points, man. Yeah. And it's like, my goodness, man, you got that. <laughs> It's exci- I'm excited because you know I I love competition. Number one. Yes. Love it. Like. I love the unknown. You know what I mean. It's right. fun. It's a new. You know, it's a. It's the first of this this year. I'm excited. Like you know, it, I, I don't know, man. I just. I tell you what. It, even if I wasn't a coach in this conference, I would be all into the KCAC this year, for sure. Yeah. I'd be watching it tight. I mean, everybody. You know, there's something phenomenal about chaos sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, man, and and that's why I tell these guys embrace ca- embrace it. Embrace yeah. it, man. Embrace it. Plus, when you when you're having the kind of season uh, that we're having, we we know. Okay, we dropped two games. We feel like two games that you know we could have won. Right? It's right. one of those things. I'm like, look, man, this is great. It'd be great to be sitting here five and zero, oh, whatever the case may be. Uh, but you know, if you if you can have that adversity and then find a way to go on a roll, man, that's so sweet. Yeah. It feels so good. I've been a part of teams that have that have done that. I told you I coached in high school where, you know, it was district play that right. mattered. And I remember losing every non-district game and mm-hmm. then finding a way to win a district and go to the second round of the, the uh, Acacia playoffs. So yeah. it was uh, – it, it, it's so exciting because people don't expect – you know, they don't expect mm-hmm. it. They don't see you coming. Um and the only way to do that, though, is you, you've got to begin to trend upward. You've got to continue to work and practice as if you are 5-0. and oh. Right. You know what I mean? You've got to work. And that's the conversation that we've been having this week. Like, we don't want to practice like we're a 3-2 and two team. Right. We want to practice like we're 5 and 0 team. That's what matters, man. And, and I think our guys are, are doing a good job of responding to it. We'll, we'll find out tomorrow a little bit more about the, the response to, to the challenge to, uh, you know, step up so that we can go out and, and perform to the best of our ability. That's all I want. Right. If the best of our ability is, is uh, you know, uh, whatever the case may be, win, lose, tie. If we're playing to the best of our abilities and I'm sitting here like, man, Dan, you know, we did everything we can. You know, we mm-hmm. did things well. We made plays. We minimized penalties. Like, uh, we didn't turn the ball over. We created turnovers. And, man, they they got us. Uh, I can, I'm okay with that. Right. You know what I mean? But when it's, you know, it, it, it's something left out there to be att- obtained. Mm-hmm. No, nah, man, that's not okay. That's not who Bethel College football is, and we're not going to settle for that. We're going to continue to push and, and push for, for excellence out of these guys. Certainly, Coach. All right, well, that's going to end it for our first segment of the show here on the Thresher Football Show. And when we come back, we're going to preview the Threshers and the Tabor College Blue Jays coming up next here on the Thresher Football Show. 
Thresher fans, get ready for the upcoming school year by becoming a member of the Bethel Booster Club. Your membership impacts all athletic programs by paying for experiences last year, such as the Threshbees Award Show, postseason experiences and postseason tickets, the Hall of Fame Banquet, enhanced live streaming equipment, new banners and Thresher Gym, equipment for the Gearing Hall Weight Room, windscreens at Ward Tennis Center, and Thresher Stadium. Be a part of Thresher Athletics history and a booster club that is living out the Bethel College Athletics mission by creating life-changing experiences for our student-athletes through four levels of membership plus parent and young alumni specials. Athletics is an integral part of the Bethel College experience and thanks to your support, we look forward to growing our success for the future. Visit BethelThreshers.com slash Booster Club to become a member today. Welcome back to the Thresher Football Show. I'm Dan Page alongside head football coach at Bethel College, A.B. Stokes. Bethel College 3-2 and two on the season, getting ready to wrap up non-divisional action in the Menno Bowl. Dum-dum-dum against Tabor as it'll be at Hillsboro this coming Saturday at 2 o'clock kick. You can watch it on the KCAC network, I believe, uh, Mr. Rob Rental, Rempel, rather, uh, who's also an admin at Hillsboro High. Uh, he does some of their games at home. So I know Rob Rempel. Yeah. Yeah, he was a former Lions guy. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah he broadcasts. He, he does some of the home games. I might so, tell don't be too biased. Yeah. Uh, we, we, <laughs> we, 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 we've tried to form a KCAC announcers group, and uh, it uh, it fell apart tremendously because, you know, I hand out pronunciations to all these teams. Yeah. And, you know, out of the five teams we played, three on the road now, I think one of them used them. Oh. So, I mean, that, that's all I'll say yeah. with that. I mean, but come on now. I mean, we gotta <laughs> got to be better than that. I mean, I hear parents all the time. They're like, we want to hear our kids' names said correctly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, I mean, yeah. As a former teacher, I could tell you that that was a strong component. It didn't matter what it looked like on paper. You asked that student, you know, until you got it down. Yeah, and I tell you what, man, it is. It means something. My, my wife was talking to my son about getting his uh suffix on his on the oh yeah on the website on the roster he's in college now yeah he's yeah she's like hey they don't have the two behind your name so <laughs> it matters, man. I, I know if they was out there calling them ab stikes he, she'd be oh no oh no she'd be yeah, that ain't happening yeah no no no, that ain't happening. Well, sidetrack there. But uh, Bethel takes on Tabor this week. You can watch it on the KCAC Network. Mr. Rempel will have that for you as the Tabor Blue Jays and the Bethel College Rushers go at it. Tabor looking for their first win still on the season, 0-5 under head coach Mike Gardner. And they welcome Bethel in. And, of course, you know, this is a rivalry game. Um, you know, the Menno Bowl with the two Mennonite type schools and uh, Bethel has won three straight in the series and you know I was thinking about it this last week I was like for the scheduling purposes you play three of the last four years at Tabor Mm. it it was kind of interesting that it happened like that because you were there last year Mm -hmm. and then um, you know for your first season back and then you know in 2021 it was here and then in the spring of 21 that was actually the 2020 season it was there and uh, Bethel clinched the conference championship that day in the spring so uh, it's been an interesting series and then you go back to the 2019 game where I, I know there's some alumni that like to forget that one um, you know fumbling inside the five and oh, stuff like yeah. that yeah that one went right down the wire, and I think that was Fall Fest. It was. That game that year. So, But, yeah, I mean, it's it's been an interesting game to follow in the series. I'm sure the Blue Jays will be up for this one, if not you know, any other game on their schedule as Bethel comes to town. And, again, they are 0-5 on the season. Let's look at some things uh, related to the numbers for the Tabor Blue Jays. Uh, it looks like they're more of a run team, averaging 107 yards rushing per contest, 13 points per game, and 78 yards passing through the air on the season. Uh, defensively, they're giving up 30 points a game, 250 yards through the air per contest, and giving up 172 yards on the ground per game for Tabor College. And, uh, you know, it's it's been interesting. We were just talking off the air about, you know, the in- the games that they've been in this mm-hmm. season and uh, you know they know how to battle and their defense can step up at times absolutely i think you know they their defense has played some of the toughest teams and on our side really really tough mm-hmm. you know i mean you talk about evangel 14 7 uh southwestern 20 to 10 you know what i mean like so they they you know they're gonna 
they're going to definitely be prepared. Coach Gardner is a really good coach. He does a great job. Veteran coach. Uh, you know, I got a lot of respect for him. Uh, he, he, I used to play against him while, while, when he was coaching at mm -hmm. Tabor there. So got a lot of, lot of respect for him. And I, I know this. Uh, we, we can't show up to Tabor uh, looking at record. We can't show up to Tabor uh, overlooking anything. Like we, We've got to come ready to go because I know they will be. Yeah, the, and they definitely want to be up for this game. And, I mean, you know, they want to start getting prepared for their division, you know, as early as possible. I Absolutely. mean, they've, they've tested so many good teams in the, uh, or in the Kessinger division. Um, so, you know, they want to be playing their best football going into those last five, just like Bethel does here towards the end of the season. So let's look at some individual numbers for the Blue Jays. Uh, different quarterbacks we've seen. Tyson Dozier, number 14, a freshman. Uh, he's thrown for 302 yards and two touchdowns, three interceptions on the season. Then we've also seen William Green, number zero. Uh, he has thrown for 88 yards on seven completions, one touchdown and one interception. On the ground, uh, we mentioned that, you know, that seemed to be a little bit of their strength. They're heavy there then versus the pass on the season. Jordan Bolden, number five, their junior running back, 353 yards rushing. Uh, yet to have a touch, rushing touchdown, however, on the season. Uh, Jacob File uh, has rushed it a few times for them as well. But, uh, yeah, just one rushing touchdown on the year so far for Tabor and three through the air on offense. And interesting enough, their touchdown catches are from Devin Jones, number 24, uh, who can catch it. I think he's kind of a running back or slot type mm -hmm. uh, for them, 102 yards receiving. Isaiah Williams, a freshman, 100 yards receiving as well, and a touchdown for the Blue Jays. Um, offensively, uh, we, we've seen different looks from them in the past. We've seen them, you know, uh, hand the ball off kind of somewhat in an eye to some degree yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you know, try to play power football with you guys. And uh, But uh, you give them some momentum and energy and incentive. I, you know, we saw last year at Tabor, you know, they were really trying hard to get back into the game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think at halftime it may have been a – one or two score game maybe yeah um but they yeah they definitely like i said man they're definitely gonna gonna be prepared and gonna play really really hard so that's the blue jays on offense on defense for the blue jays this season brooks gardner senior linebacker 47 tackles three tackles for loss and an interception as well as two forced fumbles for the blue jays cole hernandez 37 tackles on the year four tackles for loss and uh, brandon king a defensive back 30 tackles christian Tuasasopo with 25 tackles on the season darian gibbs another freshman you know three of their top six tacklers are freshmen by the way uh, 22 tackles on the year and other than that, I see Dusty Daigle, a freshman linebacker, 21 tackles, and Martavian Jackson, a junior defensive back, some of their tackling leaders on the year. We mentioned their defense. They did have a pick six against Bethel last year. Um, you know, you guys tried to throw it out to the, maybe the flat a little bit, yep. and uh, it was jumped. And it, it's like they were new. They knew it was coming. They had watched it happen a lot on film. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, they've done it twice this year. Yeah. So, you know, they'll definitely be ready for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, DJ's getting the ball out a lot quicker this year. Mm -hmm. uh, than it was in that game. I remember uh, they 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 got pretty close a couple times last year before they actually got it. And I remember telling uh, Coach Langford, I'm like, hey man, we can't we can't do this. We can't do this. And, and, yeah. Uh, right as I'm saying it, the ball's coming <laughs> coming out of his hand, and I see number eleven just right off the edge. And I'm yep. just like, oh gosh. Like, yeah. Oh, but. You know, ho hopefully, you know we we definitely won't won't have that happen. You know, we just <laughs> we just hopefully it won't happen. You know, we're 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 plotting against that. All right, right. we're plotting against that. So uh, should be should be a good game plan for us. You guys are you know basically at the halfway point of the season. Uh, you still have a lot to show, I guess, as far as, you know, some things, some more things you can do yes, uh, yes, on yes. both sides of the football, honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, as you get, to, you know, towards 
the you know the side of the schedule i mean it all matters but the, the one that probably matters most at this point for sure uh you know you will start seeing some some things different um you have so much talent and ability to you know play on different things you have guys like you know big physical receivers yeah uh you know Jaden cartwright and jacob reyes i mean yeah you know We've only seen snippets of oh, what yeah. they can do. Oh yeah, no, no, it, it, it's time. It's time, <laughs> and we're working. We're working hard. Coach Den's working hard every day. You know what I mean? To to find ways to make sure we're getting the ball out of that. And I'll just put it to you like this too, without saying too much. I don't know who watch and who doesn't. Right. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? We we, we know some people that watch. <laughs> we, <we're> gonna, oh. <laughs> Did I get you in trouble just there? No, man. No, man. No, man. We we know what it is. Man. We, we know what it is. No, I'm just I'm just like man, Dan. <laughs> what I was saying was, I'm gonna just move on, man. Okay. I'm move on. <laughs> there you go. You're not gonna you're not gonna tell people anything. No, I'm. Y- on. You know. <laughs> yeah. I saved you there. I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just know this. Know this, man. We got a lot of tricks up our sleeve. So I'll leave, it, I'll leave it at that. We got a lot of tricks up our sleeve that we ain't shown yet. So. You well, I mean? I'm an innovator. I used to have a two quarterback system on the field at the same time, both on the center. Just letting you know. I've seen that before. Just letting you know, hey man, you know, hey man, it's just we got tricks up our sleeve. It's just yeah. any by any means necessary, we trying to win. You know, what I'm saying? I've seen the two quarterback in the spread before. We have one that gets a snap, and then you know, one kind of lines up as a running back. The other is just a running back, and then you just read option to them, and then they you can run the option or throw the ball down the field. I mean, that's it's kind of interesting, but not a lot of teams do that. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, <laughs> what I, I you know, you definitely want people to make sure they're prepared for anything just like you would be in that scenario so uh but interesting interesting thoughts to that as well um you know i guess getting to this point of the season close to halfway we've seen a lot of uh, characteristics from your team Mm -hmm. um you know i i I really enjoy the ability for your defense to rotate guys in and on on offense uh we've seen that growing more and more i mean it's not just you know the running back position or the receiver position um you know slot positions things like that um you know more and more trying to get guys opportunities the defensive line is big you know defensive backfield um you know so many guys that get minutes and you know it's because of that year in and year out that some of these older guys are prepared yes yes and that's what it that's it, it's a never-ending cycle. You hit it on the head that you know it's, it's in order to be be prepared. When when is your time? Ta- when is your time? You be prepared, and uh, that's what we're trying to get. You know, we're, mm-hmm. we're making sure we're going to be doing that at every single position. It's it's kind of a thing now. Well, I mean, the the most successful teams at this level do that. Yes. Uh, you you know you want to give everybody reps, whether it's game practice. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. For sure. Yeah, so you know, be ready for anything, and uh, in you know, just any situation that comes up, and we'll be interested to see some. When I when I say you know, creative possibilities and the ceiling for teams, mm-hmm. you know, the you know, I think of specifically on your team with well, Trayvon Madison. I mean, you could do so many different things with yes. him as well. Yes. And uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, just you can. There is no ceiling there. I feel like no. Not at all, man. Not at all. It's it's just uh, because when you got guys like him, balls in their hand, you 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 better be aware. You know what I mean. You better know where where he is on on the field at all times. So yeah, I mean, some teams won't even kick to him nowadays. Nope. And you know, Brendan's been ready for it, and uh, your middle row guys got to be ready for it as well yeah. uh you know i like having garrett slater there at times because you know he has the speed yeah. as well to have a decent return so yeah. and we're, uh, we're we're waiting on uh we're waiting on uh some things to come through for another speedster we got okay. uh that that hasn't played yet because we're waiting on some things to come through yeah and hopefully you know this is the week that i believe it has to come through so hopefully it, it happens and if so you know we'll have we'll, we'll you know you may see Two four four type speed guys back there, man. That's okay. That that, that and, and it looks like it. Sure. Know, it looks like it. So. 
All right, I'll be looking for it, definitely. <laughs> for this week's game against Tabor again, it is at Hillsborough, and it will be a 2 o'clock kick from uh, Tabor College. They're on the campus. Uh, they have a nice field, nice facility there at Tabor College, and always interesting when the Blue Jays and the Threshers get together for football game. Um, so... This game, again, will be on the KCAC Network. There's lots of games on the KCAC Network this week. We'll run down the schedule for that. Uh, most most of them, a couple afternoon games, looks like. Avila at home against Evangel. That might be an interesting one as well. Um, you know, Eli Williams, a guy who's capable of throwing for 300 yeah. yards a game. Yeah. You know, he's going to test some defenses there. And, uh, you know, he's... You never know what he's going to do. Like right. That's the thing. Like He could go off against anybody, and they could be flawless on offense yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, against a very good defensive team. But we also saw St. Mary score 40-plus on Evangel. So right. that's uh, another f item to think of. That's at 1 o'clock. You can watch it on the KCAC Network. Uh, this – the website for KCAC says you guys play at 2.30. I thought it was 2 o'clock. It, it, I believe it's 2 o'clock. I believe so, it's 2 o'clock. Oh, Bethany in Ottawa will play at 2.30 from Ottawa. So okay. there you go. Uh, you know, so a few afternoon games. Kansas Wesleyan at home against McPherson. That'll be a good one as well. McPherson's playing oh, really yeah, well. That, yeah, yeah um, that will be a good one. That, I don't know how indicative that will be for the course of the season. And then a couple evening games. Friends goes to Sterling and Southwestern goes to St. Mary. That that might be an interesting one to watch as well. Yeah, um, yeah both of those evening contests on the KCAC network. Uh, I don't know, Coach. Uh, Evangel, Avila might be a pretty good game. Uh, McPherson, Kansas Wesleyan, those kind of stand out as well as St. Mary and Southwestern. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think the Kansas Wesleyan McPherson is a really, really interesting one. That's an interesting matchup because, man, I think, I think McPherson is – I think they're for real, man. I really do. Uh, got a lot of respect for uh, the coaches and what they're doing over there, man. They, they, I think they're for real, man. I, I, and I, I, I'm just curious to see that one because uh, obviously, you know, Kansas Wesleyan has pedigree, right? Mm -hmm. uh, prestige, whatever you want to call it. Like Kansas Wesleyan, they're a team that every week you see them, and you're not. Nobody's just gonna write them off because right. of how good they've been for so long, right? right. Uh, and I'd be interested to know what the what the matchup uh, or the history between Kansas Wesleyan and McPherson, what it is right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I know Kansas Wesleyan probably has, has gotten the better of them right. for the last, I want to know how many years and when's mm -hmm. the last time because uh, obviously being a, being a, a, a team – that you know we we hadn't beat Kansas Wesleyan at home since 2008 yeah um, and until last year hadn't beaten them since 2008 right and so you know th those are always things that th your opponents know they know you know right. what I mean it's it's th they know and you know and and your guys know too and sometimes want to overcompensate and do things not saying that's what happened in our game at all I just think our game was unfortunate uh I would love to play uh, Kansas Wesleyan during the bye week if they want to reschedule. So, <laughs> I would love to play them again. I would love to play them again. Right? You would love to play them completely healthy. I yeah, mean. That, I'm saying the bye week. That's yeah. what I said about two weeks from now. You know what I mean? I would love to play them again. And that, that's not saying that, you know, oh, we beat them or anything like that, but I would just love to play them again. I'm a right. competitor. I want to compete again. Like, hey, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, but so, again, I'll just back to their game. I, I think, man, it, it, that's that's the one that that I'm interested in the most. Yeah, and then of course you know I want to Sterling, my alma mater, and their <laughs> friends. You know I've got I've got people over there, so yeah. You know I want to. I I mean I, I'm I'm gonna watch and see see what that how how that one goes. Uh, right. You know if, if if it's gonna if it's gonna you know it's, it, and you know hey man that's that's just an interesting it's an interesting game when you when you play your alma mater it's always yeah. fun you know what i mean so. yeah and i just want to throw out there that when we're, we're talking about this information it is purely objective uh you know it's it's purely factual stuff i don't you know we're not making this stuff this stuff up i mean it 
we talked about it, it you know we, we speak from the truth side of things and oh, what, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Said, with yeah. evidence yeah, yeah you know and so you know take it for whatever you will uh in that aspect of things but uh yeah it should be a good one uh, again mcpherson at kansas wesleyan bethel's at Tabor. friends is at sterling evangel at avila Bethany at Ottawa and Southwestern at St. Mary this week's conference slate and then everybody off for the first week of October it, uh, practices what might be a little interesting for some of them I, I know some coaching staffs like to get a little creative you know when you kind of have a bye week um, our, the Bethel program really doesn't seem like it's had a bye week in a long time because of it being at the end of the season right. the last couple of years yep, yep. Um, and then you play it a division two school a couple years ago in that spot so um yeah so it, it's it's a little interesting to see how things are gonna fare once we get to that one so a couple big ones coming up again this week bethel against Tabor at two o'clock from hillsboro the meno bowl and then uh you get a bye week and then you play fall fest so always always great to have fall fest and on october 14th fall fest football game and uh, a lot of cool things i see you in the videos with uh, brad schmidt there you know promoting uh fall fest oh, there yeah. for the college for bethel <laughs> college and yeah, uh yeah. yeah they got the the retro like thresher guy on the logo this year i like it oh, that's yeah cool. a little bit so uh, cool. if you haven't seen it check it out at bethelks.edu to get some more information on Fall Fest coming up because everybody should be prepared to come to that because it's it's phenomenal every year. Yes, it so. is. Fall Fest is awesome. All right, so that's going to do it for our program this week. Hey, thanks everybody for watching. It doesn't matter if you know you're a parent, a fan, or alumni, donor, whoever you are. We thank you so much for watching, and this is only for you know the players, the coaches, and families, and that's why we do it. We try to make this special and promote life-changing experiences at Bethel College. So, Coach, do your thing. Hey, you know, uh, ditto what Dan said. We're de definitely grateful, and uh, hey, love God. Love my wife and family and love Bethel College. Bethel College football. Roll on, baby. There you go. So for Coach A.B. Stokes, I'm Dan Page. Until next time, roll on.